Hey, it's another week, another recipe, and today I am trying to tackle a cake from 1919 called Butter Honey Cake, using only honey as a sweetener. I've never really baked with honey before, so come hang out with me and cross your fingers. This turns out as delicious as it sounds. Hi, and welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new here, thanks for joining me on this experiment, and if you are a regular here, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Today, we are going to be making a cake. And this one is going to have more of a little personal um, agenda with it because, very long story short, we just found out that finally, that my husband has a sugar intolerance, like sucrose intolerance, so he can't have stuff with table sugar in it. We also just found out my daughter has the same thing and we are now testing my oldest son for the same thing because he's showing the same symptoms. Which means that for my three-year-old's birthday party in 10 days, I need a cake. Um, but I need a cake that everybody can eat. And so we know that my tribe is able to have honey because of the amount of fructose in it, the fruit sugar in it, or however that works, science. I decided to search the archive.org website and I actually came across a 1922 recipe book called Honey and Its Uses in the Home by Carolyn Hunt. I found this recipe for butter honey cake, which I figured, you know, that sounds as good as anything else. So. Come with me and let's see if this is going to be edible. I hope so. Okay, so it says to rub the honey and the butter together. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm just gonna mush it around until it's mixed. If you guys know what rubbing honey and butter together means, let me know. So we need a cup and a half of honey, and the way that I have a feeling we're going to be going through honey, I'm gonna be starting to take out stock in Costco, because not only is this gonna be a journey of figuring out how to use honey. It's also gonna be a journey in trying to figure out mini batches of regular baked goods for me. Cause I don't particularly care for sugar free if I don't have to. Like when mama wants a cinnamon roll, mama wants a cinnamon roll. For the sake of pouring honey, I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. So that's much easier. And then a half cup of butter. I'm not sure this is what rubbing these together looks like, but um, you know. Why not? Okay, once we've got that thoroughly mixed, it says to add unbeaten eggs and beat. So I'm gonna to switch to my whisk, and I need the egg yolks. The whites, um, it looks like we're gonna be folding in later. So let me get a bowl here. Okay. Oops. So one, two, says just to beat it together. I wish I had one of those old hand mixers, like the crank ones. I think my mom used to have one. No, maybe that was an old egg beater. I can't remember. Okay, that's looking lovely. Okay, then add flour, cinnamon, salt, and baking soda dissolved in water. I wonder why, I wonder if that makes a difference. So two teaspoons of cinnamon, half teaspoon of salt. and then one and a half teaspoons of baking soda in water. So here's my, this is my two tablespoons of water. Okay, pour that in, mix that together. Okay, and then five cups of flour. This almost doesn't look like enough liquid for the amount of flour, but we shall see. I probably should have done that in little little quantities. So far, it's a light and it's light and fluffy so far. Although it's not looking like cake batter at all. This is starting to look more like a cookie dough. But I haven't added my egg whites yet, so maybe that'll help with consistency. This is not a cake batter consistency at all. It's not sticking to my it's not sticking to my hands real awful bad. Yeah, I feel like it feels like chocolate chip cookie dough. This is what I get after all of that before I add in egg whites. I'm gonna not judge prematurely. Okay, we're just gonna see what happens. I need to wash my hands first. It says to add beaten egg whites. So it doesn't say stiff peaks or just minorly beaten. My thought is if I make the egg whites as stiff as I would a meringue, like I would put into an angel food cake, um, that causes a cake to have air and be light and airy, almost marshmallowy. 
Uh, but this is so dense that I feel like if I did that and I would fold it in, I would lose a lot of those air bubbles. So maybe I'll just go for soft peaks so it has more of a liquidy consistency and maybe that liquid will make it a little more runny. I'm gonna go to my mixer and whisk these because I'm not doing that by hand. We're definitely at soft peak stage. It's soft enough to where I think I'm just gonna lay that on there and just kind of try to fold this in. I don't have high hopes for not popping any bubbles, so we shall see what happens. It is making it easier to work with though, and I think I might end up with like a muffin batter consistency, which is way better than a cookie dough batter consistency. Okay, so it's like a wet cookie dough, not muffin or cake. But you know what? We're gonna roll with it because that's what it said. Okay, so the next thing I need a shallow cake pan, which I only have this. I'm not sure how much more shallow you would want. Um, maybe in comparison to an angel food cake or a bundt cake, this would be considered shallow. And then it just says bake. So I am I'm just gonna lightly grease this and shove it in there, I guess. Now, as far as baking times go, normally I would put my cakes on at 350 for about 40 minutes or so, just depending on what I'm doing. But because I don't know how honey works very well in like caramelization and burning, I am going to put it on for three at 300 and maybe cook it for a little longer to see. As I have a feeling that something with the honey might make it burn faster. I hope this is good. I hate it when people are left out of good things, like when you have a gorgeous cake or a lovely dessert or something, but they can't have it. Okay, that's that. That is, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna stick that in at 300 and start it at 30 minutes just to see what it looks like. Okay, so this is after 30 minutes at 300. That's actually pleasantly surprising. Definitely not done. Very squishy in the middle. I'm gonna put it in for another 20 and see what happens. All right, so now we're gonna play a little game called Will This Come Out of the Pan <laughs> in One Piece? Oh, oh, it will. Okay, well that was a lot less um, exciting as I thought it would be. Here it is, it is Slightly warm. It's cooled off for the most part. It's heavy and dense. <laughs> um, but it smells great. It shaped nicely. It dipped in the middle, which tells me that this part probably isn't as cooked, just right in the center. But the toothpick came out clean, so it might be a little doughy. But I didn't want to leave it into too long, um, so it didn't get too dark. Because nothing's worse than getting it too dark and having that burnt taste, even if it's not actually burnt. So... I am pleasantly surprised with how this looks. I can just picture it with like a cream cheese, uh, pumpkin frosting, maybe. I wonder if I could do that with honey. All right, let's try cutting into it and see what happens. Oh, that felt hollow. Uh, yeah, that middle part is not finished. Okay, so if you can see, the middle part is still pretty darn doughy, um, but the outer part is sufficiently done. Overall though, the breading is nice and squishy. It's dense, but it might be more like a coffee cake. Let's give it a try. So this was in the oven for almost an hour and a half at 300. I was thinking when I make normal cakes, I use the Wilton cake strips, which are the fabric strips that you soak in water and you put on the outside of your tin out here. And it helps not only keep the cake flat, but it helps it cook, I guess, more evenly. And so your middle doesn't end up like this with your outside being charred. And so I'm wondering if maybe the next time I make it, that would help if I used one of those. I'm gonna cut off this really doughy part and I'm just gonna try the part that did cook. It smells really good, it smells like fall. Okay, let's see. Mmm, that's, that's delightful. 
that almost tastes like I used pumpkin. And honestly, you probably could use pumpkin in this. This is more of a spiced coffee cake than anything else, and I'm, I'm here for this. This is really, really good. The texture is still bouncy, even if it is dense, but there's a lot of moisture to it, which I think is attributed to the honey. I think it would pair great with some apple cider and maybe a pumpkin frosting. And I think on the inside, I could probably put some pumpkin pie seasoning in it just for a little more kick or a robust flavor. But I mean, honestly, it's nice and the crumb, the crumb is really nice. I'm really, really happy with it. Birthdays aside, this is a great fall dessert. I'm definitely going to be experimenting with this to make this better because I, I could see this being a staple in our house. All right, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for your support. It has been awesome being able to connect with some of you in the comments and having some recipe ideas come through the comment section as well. I'm really enjoying that. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it brings a little bit of joy to your day. And I hope you know that uh, you are in this experiment just as deep as I am. I never pre-try these recipes. They're all, uh, what you see on camera is uh, obviously <laughs> what you get. <laughs> Anyways, please hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification. I try to upload every Monday with a new recipe from an old historical cookbook for you to try. And I'm having so much fun with this. I hope you are too, and I will see you next week.